So I've got an older canvas here that I'm applying purple gold leaf to using Mod Podge. I've got some Mod Podge right here. You just want to apply it evenly. In thin layers, use whatever size gold leaf you have and whatever color that you want. But for this one, I'm using purple, three by three sheets. I've got a lighter shade of purple. Okay, so I'm just going to use a dry soft brush here, mop brush, and just kind of tap it in there. And then I'll just brush off any excess. The idea is to not cover the entire canvas. I'm going to come in between with some turquoise. And I'll have a full list of all the supplies I'm using below this video in the description box. What I'm going to be using, you can see on the left of me here on my palette, I've got some titanium white, phthalo blue, and phthalo green. So just kind of circle around. Brushing in all directions, loosen up all those little pieces, get rid of them now. And then we're going to work around the gold leaf. I've got a flat brush. I'm going to mix up some white with blue and green. And I'm going to come over top of of that purple in between all those little cracks so the thing about gold leaf is that it's so luminous that it will glow through the paint that you apply over it, especially when you're just applying like a thin layer. And that's what you want to do is just work, work with the gold leaf. So just pick a few areas where you add a little bit here and there. I'm going to come in at the base here, a little bit heavier with the blue and the green. And I don't know if you guys can see this through the screen, but look at the color it makes when it goes over top of that light purple. Isn't that pretty? It just makes like a whole different shade. So I'm just going to gently brush over here, softening some of these edges. My brush is a little damp. I just rinsed it out and dried it off so I don't have like any drippy amounts of water or not that much water that it's dripping. Okay, what I want to do come in here and start adding a little line like this and then I'm just going to gently pull up and flick so 
I'll add some on this side as well. A little white, it doesn't have to be even. And we'll just start pulling these little flicks up here for kind of a start of a forest. I'm going to gently pull and sweep down for some shadows or reflections. I haven't decided if this is going to be water down here. I'm just making this up. Had some extra time today. And honestly, I'm just having so much fun with the gold leaf lately. And you guys are requesting more so don't have to twist my arm I love 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 showing you guys techniques so I'm going to take a little bit more blue and green and wiggle here side to side And we'll have a little opening here for maybe a waterfall. So we want our waterfall to show up. So I'm going to add extra green and blue right in this area. I'm going to take my number 14 filbert brush. Add a little bit of white, green, and blue. Mix that up, get it on the end of my brush, and we'll add a few trees here. So just a little line, and then push and tap side to side. They don't all have to be the same shade of blue and green. You can add a little more or less of each color, including the white, lighter and darker. And a little leaning tree in here. It's funny how I like to add leaning trees because obviously that's, you know, you see them in nature a lot of the time and trees aren't perfect. They have a lot of movement to them. But I have some people that just freak out when I create tutorials with crooked trees and they're like your trees aren't even straight you shouldn't be teaching <laughs> it's just funny because it's I picture these people um never going for a hike out in the forest in their life and not really being in touch with nature so I hope that um they get a chance in their lifetime to experience all the beautiful imperfections in nature it's those crooked trees that give it so much character and beauty I'm gonna add a little bit more depth here maybe just another little tree see how you can just quickly layer over like that let's add a little bit more blue down here over top of some of that bluey green the reason why I'm doing this here is so that we get um, more of the waterfall showing up when we come over with our lighter colors. I'm going to take some white and I'm going to start adding a little bit of snowy highlights. So when this is being applied, it's being applied to wet paint. So the blue and green first base coat is wet. So what's happening is that sometimes I'm picking up those colors and it's naturally organically blending making softer tones and i really like the benefits of painting wet on wet because of that yeah, that's one benefit that it has some people like to dry their layers in between that's fine too but if you're somebody that likes to skip a step you can paint wet on wet and Save yourself the time of mixing all those layer tones and shades that you'd have to if it was dry in order to get all those light pastel shades. So you can just do it 
naturally and quickly, instantly, by taking the white and going over while it's still wet like this. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit more in here. Not every tree has to have the same amount of layering on it. If you wanna have some that are a little bit darker, maybe more in shadow, then just use less, or you could just leave some of them without any at all on them. Maybe they're in silhouette or in shadow. And I don't want this one to get lost with the background, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of extra white there to the top. And I usually just take, for a small moon, because I want to add it right in here, I just take my pinky and I dip it in and dab it. And then I'm going to add a little dab down here for a reflection. And then I'm also going to take a little bit more of this white, kind of off white, because it's pulling into a little bit of that light bluey turquoise. And I'm going to come in from the side and I'm going to go over some of the areas here. I don't want to go over all of that beautiful gold leaf though. We want to have hints of that showing, right? We don't want to lose that. So I'm going to apply this on an angle so we get this height. It feels like there's a bank now. Add a little bit more and just by twisting and rolling around with my brush kind of ends up looking like clouds and then you can even use less pressure and just kind of the tip of your brush and, and you'll get the little silver lining of the clouds or it could be just like some little cracks in between the clouds I'm going to add a little bit more here on the side. Create different slopes and little dips in the snow. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of height to some of these areas. Like maybe we've got some rocks, snow covered rocks here kind of at the base of our waterfall. Build up a little bit of height here. I'm gonna use an angle flat brush or just an angle brush, I guess. Get it a little bit wet and then pull into my white. I'm gonna kind of wiggle like that fan it out just a little bit. I find it easier to work with um, a flat brush, an angle brush, um, than fan brushes. Uh, I just feel like I have a little bit more control with them. So I'm going to come in with a pointy side, the highest part of my brush. I'll keep away from the center of the waterfall. So I'm using the shorter side to really guide me. So I'm going to pull in and drop. load my brush up again and I flip to see how I have the tallest point of the brush on this side when I come in this side for my for my waterfalls then I can flip it over so the tallest point of my brush is facing the left and I'm going to come in here pull and drop uh, slice into that white So you can go over, change the height if you want it to come up a little bit, if you want your waterfall to start a little higher. Just go over top. But you want to leave these 
little lines. So you can kind of turn your brush this way and pull down a few more little strips of water. I see waterfall. And then I just pick a few areas to just pull along the side here. A little bit more white. At the water's edge here. I'm going to add a little waterfall back here. I'm going to hold my brush, my angle brush on an angle and just pull and drop a little bit. I have a few little levels. Add a few little ripples here, that water moving forward to the edge. I'm going to just line my brush up like this, wiggle flat, and then slice into, just cut into it so you get a nice little line of paint there. And I'm going to add a little fence. And have it just start to disappear through the trees. I'll take a little bit of blue and green. Add it to the right side. And we could just kind of wiggle in. Boards. I'm kind of in front now, some of these fence posts with more white. I'm going to use my little round brush here to just soften the outside of the moon. You don't want to go over the center of it, but it's okay if you accidentally do. Just re-dab it with white. I want to just give it a nice little glow soften it a little bit. Okay, I'm going to take some more white. Add some more little bits of snow on here that are a little bit more visible. And then just go kind of at the base and Create these little arches, kind of little lumps here, so that it feels like the snow is above, kind of burying those fence boards in. A little bit more of my blue green though I don't have much green left a little bit in there but I'm just gonna add a little bit of this blue what I've got left in my green to add some more contrast and shadows here These trees a little darker. Okay, and then I'm going to 
come over top with some white. You ever see those waterfalls that are just been frozen in time? They're so beautiful. I used to see those driving in the Canadian Rockies when we lived there. And they would be like turquoise. It was just so gorgeous. All those things I took for granted. I should have taken pictures of them. You kind of just grow up thinking everybody has that and gets to see that all the time, but the Canadian Rockies are something else. If you guys ever get a chance to go there, you really should. It's quite beautiful. Okay, I'm just gonna soften the sides down here with my little dry mop brush. Just kinda go around in little circles like this and then a light little pull, make it look a little Kind of frosty like and I'm gonna take a little bit of white tap really lightly and add a few little frosty looking bushes I'm gonna add a little bit along the River bank there. Okay, just a little something right down here. Actually, it looks like it could be another little creek bed running into the river. Okay, so I'm going to take this painting out of the easel and move it around so you can see the shimmer of the gold leaf. Isn't that pretty? What started out as a really light purple down here ended up looking more like a rose gold or champagne. But I hope you guys uh, have fun with your gold leaf and experiment using different colors for your backgrounds. I'll have more coming towards the spring. We'll be painting some flowers, incorporating some gold leaf. I'm going to make a whole playlist. I think I mentioned earlier in this tutorial, or maybe my last one, I'll be having an entire playlist um, for how to use gold leaf with acrylics. Don't forget to seal with a proper sealer to prevent and protect prevent your um, gold leaf from oxidizing and to keep it lasting longer and protect it. Thanks for watching everybody and I want to wish you all the best. I'll see you soon in another video. Bye!